Baylor baseball is in search of its fourth head coach since 1973 after Steve Rodriguez stepped down following seven seasons at the helm. Who is next for the Baylor Bears? Here's a top five comprehensive list on who might be the skipper next season. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Baylor. Drake Toll here alongside a guy who works in local news. You may have heard of him. You may, if you if you turned on your TV, you might have even seen him. It's Cameron Stewart at Real Camp Stewart on Twitter. Guy who's been call, calling, calling, covering, doing sports at Baylor yes. for a few years now. All of those, all of the above. Uh, Cam, uh, specifically a big baseball fan, spent some time in the Cape Cod League as I understand it, back in the day. And How did you know that? I, 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 look, I watch the local news. I watch the, I see some of your stuff. I see some of your stuff. Uh, and Cam, if you've been watching the local news, uh-huh, 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 you've Good seen that way. Baylor now has a vacancy at its men's baseball coaching spot as opposed to its women's baseball women's coaching baseball. spot that is filled. Uh, fret not, fret not. That one is very safe. But thank you all for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. And thank you, Cam, for compiling a list of five names that you'd like to see at the top of the Baylor baseball coaching spot. I've got my five. You've got your five. They're all pretty reasonable, except for your one wild card that you have thrown in there. Uh, but before we even get to that, Cam, your not so immediate reaction to Steve Rodriguez, air quotes, stepping down. Well, I mean, look, it was a little weird when I got a call from. Mac Rhodes Monday afternoon was yeah. like, Hey, uh, just wondering if you're interested, like no big deal. If you're not just wondering, um, not how did that, how'd that conversation finish. Uh, we're, we're talking numbers. It's one of those situations. Like I saw talking wrong numbers across hey. the table. He slides a number across the table. Yeah, no, I knew what you meant. Yeah. Ah, yeah I see what I did there. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, so your immediate reaction is skewed. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I can't really get too much into the details. But I was not surprised. Um, I, I remember a couple years ago seeing a graphic of like how the Phillies in like the late aughts like just so steadily declined. Like, oh, wait, they won the World Series, yeah. then lost the World Series, then lost the NLCS, lost the NLDS. That's kind of what it feels like here. And to be fair to, to Coach Rod, who is, I still think, a, a good coach, he did build them up. They were in not, not dire straits, but – they're about what they were now when yeah. he took over. So yeah. weirdly, he doesn't leave them in a better place, but he makes brings them to tournament 2017. They really didn't have any business being there. And then obviously 18, they get a good team. They win the they get really hot at the end of the conference season, win the conference tournament. 2019, we've talked about this off the air. That team on paper should have gone to Omaha. Yeah. They were so stacked. They're the Shay Langleers guy. Yes. Yes, big big fan. Uh, best offense in the Big Twelve that year, yeah. and and the pitching just the injuries happened. It kind of fell apart, um, and then it was just like the steady decline. You know, uh, twenty twenty, they don't get much of a season, uh, but their big guns have left. Twenty twenty one, they probably should make the tournament, don't, and then this year they didn't have much of a prayer. So the writing was on the wall. I wasn't all that surprised. But it's also, as I think you've said on the podcast, that doesn't mean this was like a bad tenure. It was just time. It was time to be done. I think. Yeah, was, you know, seven full seasons. He was at the helm seven seasons, really six full seasons, six opportunities to make the NCAA tournament because you have your COVID year. And he made the NCAA tournament three times out of those six years with a couple of wins in those as well. Uh, overall, though, Rodriguez now being replaced by. Who knows? Although the options are fairly plentiful right now, especially with Texas head coaches. One of the things that I, I tweeted out this way, you know, I tweeted a little bit, a little bit. You're good at time. tweeting. I'm not going to lie to you. I did a few of those tweets. You're good and at tweeting. I, I do my retro stuff. I mean, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to save that because I'm very jealous of how you have Twitter on puppet strings, but go it's ahead. something about that algorithm. Ted Harrison, I called You're him and said, the algorithm, man. set the algorithm up for me, man. And, <laughs> and he's done so. Uh, but the, my, my, <laughs> one of the things that I found really intriguing about this entire deal is that 
the coaches before Steve Rodriguez, one being Steve Smith, who was here for 21 seasons. He was at Baylor 21 years, which I don't carry the one out of two. It's it's a long time. Uh, and then before him was possibly even more legendary, Mickey Sullivan. So you have Steve Smith, Mickey Sullivan, who Smith had 744 wins. Mickey Sullivan had 649. They're one and two on the list. Steve Rodriguez is three with 197. Pretty stark difference in those three numbers. Uh, and yeah. you look at a guy in the span of since, again, since 1973, a span of 49, almost 50 years, Baylor's only had three head coaches, and now you're fourth. You don't want to, get ready, swing and miss. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Very good. You're getting. You're ready for the Cape League. I'm getting there. I'm getting you're ready there. for the Cape League. Uh, yeah, it's like Steelers head coaches, isn't it? Like you have one every 15, 20 years. And I will be fair to Coach Rod here. Um, thank you for not being unfair to Coach I'm Rod. I'm going to be fair to him. Uh, it's almost like right place, wrong time. And that mm. Mickey Sullivan and Steve Smith had stretches like this. Okay. Where, you know, there, there were plenty of times in between where, as you were talking about with Max, you know, they were supposed to be a top 25 program. Right. They were, they had some really good teams in the early odds, but I mean, six, six tournament eligibles and three times you make it, don't get out of the regional. Like they had stretches like that, but I think we're at a point in Baylor athletics where that's just, it's just not good enough. Mm. Like the profile is being raised and, you know, maybe at a different time when Baylor was a baseball and a track school, weirdly enough, maybe he has a longer leash in a time where baseball is one of the only good sports. But now that football is competing on a national level, obviously basketball very much so women's basketball, softball, the odd year, uh, NIT yeah. champs, whatever it's called for softball, but, but an overall good program in the conference. Yeah. It's just it's just not good enough to have a couple a couple of years in a row where you're not making the tournament and you're really not threatening to win the conference in a conference where they get six or seven bids a lot of years out of nine teams, five or six bids. Uh, so it's just not it wasn't the right time. And like you said, I mean, there's some good there's a good crop of talent out there, especially close to home. That's good. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, kind of the non competitiveness of Baylor this past season is really what was the last straw of the tenure. Had they been relatively competitive and missed the NCAA tournament by one or two spots, maybe it's a different situation, but that that's not what we saw. And, and they what won what? One series in the conference? Yeah, one series. Kansas the only one. And that was the one series that got them into the Big Twelve tournament. So thank you, Kansas, for offering that one series to barely sneak Baylor into the Big Twelve tournament, which they haven't missed, by the way. Uh before we get into those top five though we now have our top five locked and loaded both of us will go in a little snake draft style uh i think that's wait what we're snake getting, draft yeah. so we can't have the same one yeah we can have the same one oh, I, really say, I do not have can, like 15 you can draft games. the same guys yeah, yeah we got uh five guys each before that though i do have to tell you i am obligated but i would do it anyway to tell you about rock auto rock auto guys your place. I still have not gotten my car fixed. Remember that time I got in a wreck like two months ago when the podcast first started? I am still currently, it's like present tense in a wreck because I haven't gotten my car fixed yet because nobody has parts. You know who does have parts though? Rock Auto. You go to rockauto.com and they have all the parts your car will ever need. Uh, so you, you go into like a, like the local auto parts store, like, hey, what's going on, man? What you need fixed? And you're like, I don't know this. And they're like, oh, you're stupid because you don't know what it is. I, I, it sounds like an exaggeration, but it's what happens at a lot of these places. They make you feel like an idiot because you don't know exactly what you need. Whereas at Rock Auto, they give you like these online, online technicians. You go, you find what you need. You, you get it easy. Bada bing, bada boom. It's fixed. They send you the parts way cheaper than you would usually get it. Rock Auto is your spot to go for all the parts your car will ever need. Fast, friendly service, and they really, they take care of you. They do. It's like family-owned business, too. So Rock Auto, check them out at rockauto.com. Again, all the parts your car will ever need are at Rock Auto. Cam, it is time for Baylor Baseball's Top Five, the short list of baseball coaches and where this program should go next. Cam, your number five pick. Oh, okay. So that's how we're going to do it. I think mm, – I'm not going to tell you how to do the podcast. I'm not. I would have gone one, each of our ones, because I think they're the same. That's why we're saving it for the last. You don't start with the you, – you, you, you hook, but you, you – But I wanted, to, I wanted to build up to my wild card. That's why. Okay. Well, then build up to your wild card. We'll do top you know what? five. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Top five right. and then wild card. All right. So I'm going to admit uh, – 
I, when doing research on this, there was only one good thorough article I saw about it. Because we're on Tegna here, I can shout him out. Curtis Quillen. Yes, you can. Um, Quillen. Sports director at KCN Channel 6. Um, got to write a column about it. Wish I could do that. Um, but three very solid names, and they're all on my list. Uh, two of them were going to be on my list anyway, even before I read the article, but one he convinced me on. So starting with, and I think the least likely of those three, uh, Dan Hefner. Yeah. From Dallas Baptist. Okay. Obviously Dallas Baptist. I know it's a Baptist school, but it's a hell of a program. Um, Can you say they, that? A little dichotomy there. They basically got in the tournament this year solely off their non-conference schedule. because they And they always do this. They schedule really good uh, midweek games, and they win a lot of them. They beat Baylor. Um, but, I mean, that's always a team that's competing for the tournament. And uh, I think it's the least likely because – he did interview for the job before uh, when Rodriguez mm. got it and he basically turned them down and he's been at that DBU for a while now. And like I said, that's just a good pro. It's like, it's like Mark few in a way yeah. going to another college basketball program. That's just not happening at this point. Mm. Um, Dan Hefner's built a pretty good thing there. And that's a team that is in the postseason every year gets to the super regionals. Like that's a real impressive program. So would love to have them. Would love to have him. Just don't think that's going to work out. I like the pick. He will also be included on my list as well in a bit different of slot because my number five is Stephen Trout, the head baseball coach at Texas State. If you want to send him an email, st30 at texasstate.edu. Just throwing that out there. That's Thank public you. information. It's Thank on you. their website. Get him out there. Uh, according to the Texas State website, third season as the head coach of Texas State after being named in 2019. So he's been there not uh, not for very long. Obviously, they had a lot of success this season and, and last season as well. Yeah. He has made a very legit program out of Texas yeah. State. They beat Texas, which is a huge to do this season in the non conference. Uh, overall, he's in his ninth season with the Bobcats. Was an associate head coach, an assistant coach, and a volunteer assistant in uh, 20, not 2009 and 2010. So he's been at Texas State for a while. Uh, they defeated two Big 12 programs in 2021, beating TCU and Oklahoma, played in the Shriners College Classic for the second time in three years. That in itself, if you can get your mid-major team to play in the Shriners freaking Classic, you probably got a good thing going. They also I give, beat Baylor, by the way. Also what? They also beat Baylor, by the they way. They did beat Baylor. They have beaten Baylor. As, as, again, as you mentioned. Baylor. DBU, yeah. uh, they DBU and Baylor or and Texas State have beaten Baylor. So my my number five previously with Texarkana College, yeah, yeah. Also, our friend Stephen uh, had the Mountaineers ranked number one too. In case you're wondering, so he's had success at the smaller level. Has never been a Power Five yeah. head coach. So Texas State Sun Belt Conference champion Stephen Trout, my number five. Cam, your number four. Um. Because I'm saving the wild card, I will just go. I also had Stephen Trout. Um, mm. but we'll get to this next point later about a different guy on the list, but I do love guys who had Juco success yeah. because that's like recruiting at another level. And um, almost, I mean, literally, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's like okay. recruiting on cocaine and you have to really like. Can you recruit on cocaine? Them. I don't think that's legal. I think they, I think they have to. Doing Juco. I think you have to. Really? He's the last chance you, Buddy Stevens. Yep. He had something going. Yeah. Uh, the Compton guy from Good Kansas. Point. Anyway. Yep. Anyway. Anyway. Just to kind of echo your points, Texas State top 10. Top 10 Texas State. A good bit of this year. They're like legit as heck, brother. Mm. Okay. Well and he got them there in a very short period of time. And he's not that old. I don't know his age. But he's not that old for a guy who's been there like 12 years. Um, and so if you're looking to get outside of the zip code or the city limits, that's a good name to be thinking about for a guy to take the next step. So I will just echo that. I also had Steven Trout on there and that would be a hell of a pickup. Wouldn't you know my number four? Guess, guess. Hmm. Yeah, it's Dan Hefner. This yeah, is I've already said it yeah. is Dan Hefner at Dallas Baptist University. Keep it, keep it Baptist. Am I right? Right. He's the head coach of DBU. Well, there's four Baptists. So you might as, there's got to be a fifth. Bound to be a fifth. What, say it again, loud and proud. Just when there's four Baptists at Balcones, no free advertising, there's bound to be a fifth. 
Yeah, very good stuff. That right if there, you know, you know. That's most people joke. do not know. Uh, 2008 season was Hefner's first at Dallas Baptist. Under Hefner, they've made the uh, NCAA tournament 10 times, Super Regional in 2011. He went to Olivet Nazarene College <clears throat> and played two years of baseball then, transferring uh, from Northern Iowa as well, in case Ooh. you're wondering. The old Wikipedia told me that one. I'll so uh, overall NCAA tournament record, 21 and 22 in NCAA tournaments. That's that's not bad for a school that size, though. 560 wins, 291 losses. And you're right, 21 and 22 in NCAA tournaments is not bad whatsoever. Even having a 21-win record in those tournaments is legit. And uh, plenty of conference titles to go along with it. Dan Heapter is my number four at Dallas Baptist. I think he'd be a really great asset to Baylor. And now we get to our final three, Cam, on who the next head coach of Baylor baseball should be. And I think... I know we're going to have at least one that's very similar, and we'll both have, I'm sure, the same number one that's very low-hanging fruit. The other two should be intriguing, but I want to say this. You know what I'm about to say? Lay it on me. Uh, <laughs> you know what else, Cam, is intriguing? Please tell me. Please, for the love of God, tell me. It's Bet Online. Bet Online is your place to go for all things sports betting. Right now, the Boston Celtics are playing the Golden State Warriors in the NBA title, and you can go and make bets on that. I don't, maybe like player props and things. Uh, I'm not a big NBA better. Maybe you are. You can go and bet on the Celtics to win the NBA title, which you should do, by the way, because the last three years, the team that's knocked Jimmy Butler out of the playoffs ended up winning the NBA title. Yeah. I don't look. It's only the facts on this show. So if you go back, go back to Boston Celtics, you can win some money on Bet Online. Go to Bet Online right now. You can check on uh, odds and previews of next season for college football. Baylor over under eight and a half wins as well. Live betting, like we mentioned, casino style gaming, all at Bet Online. Just go to the website, super accessible, Bet Online. Check them out. See what you like there. If you don't like it, it's okay. Go buy a built bar. It's Bet Online. I like the way you think, Drake. Celtics, yeah. Cam Cam the Celtics. Celtics. 17 and 4 all time in the finals, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Cam, you know who's not 17 and 4 all time in the finals? No, I don't. Whoever your next head coach recommendation is, I can almost well, guarantee it. I'm so sure. Your uh, number three best pick for head coach at Baylor baseball. This is an outside shout. Um, the only reason he's not, or the only reason he's at three is because Hefner already turned them down a couple years ago. And I already said Stephen Trout because you said Stephen Trout. But this guy's way more unlikely. His name's Chris Berry. Okay. okay. He was an assistant at Baylor. He was the pitching coach in okay. the mid aughts actually for like seven or eight years. Uh, that 2005 year, remember that? Little thing yes. called the College World Series? I think they did that. He was the pitching coach. And mm. they had a 3-2-3 team ERA, which is pretty damn good. Um, and he went on to be the head coach at Sam Houston State. Okay. Uh, then was an assistant here in Waco at a pretty successful baseball program, Clinton Community College, assistant under a pretty good coach. Never now coaches, uh, oddly enough, I think this was just a need thing for the school. He now coaches the High Lassies, the MCC softball team. So would be absolutely wild if they were baseball hired the McLennan softball coach. But he's got connections and he's succeeded at least as an assistant on this level specifically at Baylor and he's the right-hand man of a pretty good coach, but I'm not going to reveal who that is. Cam, but, uh, what the hell, man? Did you just, did you just pitch the McLennan community I did. college I did. head softball coach? Hey, they were in the um, women's world series. World series, right? Yeah, they, yeah. they went to the world series. Look, he just picks it up like lateral move and all of a sudden they're in the world series. So, Hey, look. Man, Steve Hoot. Spinners, okay? Hoot Johnigan. Hoot Johnigan going from baseball to exactly. softball. The exactly. stranger things have happened. I think this would be a he little be less strange. Way, by the way, Hoot. Hoot? That's he true. That's not impossible. Wow, wild card. Fun wild card. My you know, number, wild, yeah. I think my number three would be a little more reasonable, maybe, than the McLennan Community College head coach. That is Sean Allen. If you haven't heard of Sean Allen, there are already murmurs of this. He's got a really good recruiting base down in Houston. Allen is... The pitching coach at Texas, he's been at UT for 10 seasons as well under David Pierce. Uh, Texas, Tulane, Sam Houston State under with Pierce. 
transition to the role of pitching coach in 2020, the recruiting coordinator at Texas as well. I don't know if you knew this, but Texas is pretty good at the whole little baseball thing. So their recruiting coordinator be a pretty darn good hires head coach, uh, hitting coach as well, and recruiting coordinator from 2017 to 2019. 2021 season, so last year for Texas, they went to the College World Series final. Oh, they were right there. They were a game away. Yep. Uh, they had a staff ERA of 2.93, the best in the country. And one thing the Baylor's needed – a good pitching staff. Give me Sean Allen, the assistant coach, pitching coach at Texas, as my number three on my list. Cam, that now leaves two for both of us. Your number two for Baylor baseball. It's time for wild card. It's time for wild card. Okay. Oh, I can put the wild card in at two. Yeah. All right. This is a person because we're going to have the same number one, I think. And I yes. think that's fitting. Um, this person has Baylor experience. You ready for this? Baylor national championship experience can't say scott drew this person's son at least of a couple weeks ago maybe still now plays major league baseball is that felicia mulkey close (laughs) actually was done kim mulkey i'm just kidding i'm just kidding no kim mulkey but serious wild card you picked an assistant from the university of texas austin Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. drake c toll i'm gonna do the same thing oh 2007 Rookie of the Year, National League, five-time Major League Baseball All-Star, Mr. Troy Tulowitzki. No way. Yep. It makes no sense. He doesn't, as far as we know, do any recruiting. Um, but guy knows ball. Is guy he a coach ball. at Texas right now? Yes, yes. No, he's not. He's like a volunteer, I think, because you only have like two paid coaches. Yes, Matt Holliday uh, convinced him to, to give it a shot. Um, so he is at UT and look, I mean, take this for what it's worth, but like they really, imp- he primarily coaches the infielders and the infield defensively and they like vastly improved and like all I'm saying, Baylor would pay him coach. more than a volunteer's guy salary. Can coach. Guy can coach ball. All right. Wow. Troy be, I think he's going to be a coach one day. I don't know if that day is tomorrow for the Baylor Bears, but Troy Tulowitzki. I like it. Uh, yeah, so recruit, but. I'll insert my wild card at two. Uh, yes. Grand please. Canyon women's basketball coach Molly Miller, obviously. I don't can, think that's a wild card. I've heard that name a lot. People have thrown it around. Cases. People have thrown it around around Baylor jobs. Some people have been really, really confident in that hire before that was not made. Uh, no, I'm actually not going to have a wild card. That would have been my weird wild card to throw at the end, but I threw it there because you did too. Uh, my number two right now would be Frank Anderson. Frank Anderson's an assistant coach at Tennessee. Joined the Tennessee staff in June of 2017. Has been part of Tony Vitello's staff for four seasons after spending the previous five years. It's according to the Tennessee website. As an assistant coach at Houston, he helped lead the Cougars to three NCAA tournaments, including an NCAA Super Regional in 2014. Houston played in four consecutive American Athletic Conference tournament ca- championship games, taking home the title in 2014 and 2017. He's also considered one of the premier pitching coaches in the country, wealth of experience as a head coach and an assistant. Uh, before being at Houston, he served as the head coach for Oklahoma State for nine seasons. Ever heard of it? Yep. Leading the Cowboys to six NCAA regional appearances, as well as a trip to the NCAA Super Regionals in 07, and uh, has gotten some of the nation's top pitching staffs, too. Unbelievable ERAs, top 20 nationally, yeah. um, pretty much every season. So I don't know if you knew this. Tennessee's pretty good at baseball. Can he teach guys to throw like 105, like that kid from Tennessee? That's actually what made that kid from Tennessee throw 105. He was throwing 79. That would, that would be nice. That would be would nice. You believe I'm not going to lie to you. So my number two would be from All Tennessee, right. which I think you could you could snag interest from Frank Anderson, who's with one of the best programs in the nation. Frank's a little bit older, a little bit older, right? Yeah. So gonna get- gonna, I want to get into like two honorable mentions that I had. Both guys, yeah. because they're older, didn't make the list. Yeah, hit me. Uh, although I've done two, three old guys by now. Um, the whose names I can't remember. The guy at Louisiana Tech has yep. built a pretty good program there. They're always in the mix. And um, the guy from Alabama State. Oh, they have wow. been making noise the last couple of years. They're in the tournament this yep. year. Yep. That's been a quick turnaround uh, that he's put together. Um, so good. I don't even know their names. And then how about two with the same name? A couple of Maxes, former All Big 12 Max Garner, throwing his name in the ring. And uh, baseball SID Max Calderon, throwing his name in the ring. Mm, couple Look, long shots. Guys, just no ball, okay? 
at those plus fifty thousand odds. Yep. Toss a five dollar bill on it, makes some money. I'll put anything ten thousand to one. The day that John Cougar Mellencamp wins an Oscar, I'm going to be a very rich man. Make some money. Uh, I, I already put I already put five on Max Calderon. Max Calderon or Max Garner. Uh, Cam, number one for Baylor baseball, the head coach of the Bears, very low-hanging fruit. I think he's got to be at the very top of everyone's list right now. The murmurs have been so loud. They're not even whispers or murmurs. They are shouts. We're going to say it at the same time on three. One, two, three. Mitch Cam Thompson. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes, we that was swing and a miss. Board. Pecan. Oh. oh, we were talking. We actually were talking about that months ago. I think. Yeah, yeah. Off cam. Um, before like Coach Rod's no, job. No, your cam. On the hot seat. Yeah, thank you. That's really good. Um, before Coach Rod was really on the hot seat, I was like, man, this guy's gonna get a job. Like D one. I mean, he should. I know he's not the youngest guy, but uh, the neither are we, honestly. <laughs> True. You see this bald spot. Yeah. Anyway, so he obviously has experience with Baylor, um, coaching with Steve Smith. Uh, for years and years, the players love him. You heard Max talk about him and has built the best um, uh, Juco college baseball program in the country right now. I know they just got knocked out, but defending champs, all he does is just recycle guys into major power fives. Uh, Cape League success, some of his guys, looking at you, Josh, bro, um, and puts guys in the major leagues. So mm-hmm. I think that's pretty good. He can recruit. He wins, and he puts guys in the major leagues. Notice that Baylor took a downtrend when you didn't have Mitch Thompson at the helm. Mitch Thompson actually, in 2013, took the head coaching job at McClendon Community College. I don't know if you know this, but Baylor baseball took a very hard downtrend after 2012 when Mitch Thompson left. Thompson was at Baylor from 95 to 2012. He's my number one as well. Uh, prior to that, was a defensive coordinator. Which I didn't love know. that. Absolutely a, love that. I didn't know it was a thing. He was the defense yeah. coordinator at Auburn University uh, and assistant coach for their baseball team. Uh, <laughs> prior to cool. that, volunteer assistant at Mississippi State. Uh, spent a couple years at Mississippi State and Radford as well. Under Ron Polk, I believe, by the yeah, way. Yeah, under Polk, exactly. Legend. Also an MLB scout in 2013 for a time with the Kansas City Royals as well. Played for Fort Hayes State, Cloud County Community College. Athletes in action. Come on. come. Not saying. Just just saying. Uh, also has a master's degree from Mississippi State. So if, that, if, you, if that's what you're looking for, if that's your, your criterion I'm right there. Absolutely looking for that. More cowbell. He's a master. Mitch Thompson is a master. Has been unbelievable at McLennan. You mentioned it. Won the, the World Series last season. Has a winning pedigree at MCC. Has built MLB players, Division One college players, pumping them out of the JUCO level. I, I think it's a no-brainer that, sure, Max Garner mentioned it. Mitch Thompson is old Baylor to an extent, but even still, when it comes to ba- baseball, feels like an old sport, right? You hire the yeah. old ball coach. And, and, who- and going old Baylor is not a bad idea right now, by the way. Um, back to when they were in the top 25 a ton and going to yeah. Super Regionals and going to Omaha. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. It's yeah. If you hire Kevin Steele as football coach, old Baylor <laughs> football, yeah, we don't have to do old Baylor Ooh. baseball. You have Ooh. Mitch Thompson. Who get, look? If you don't know, everybody listening right now, if you don't know what Mitch Thompson looks like, just Google Mitch Thompson. Google Mitch Thompson MCC, and you'll go that that's the guy I want. That's you'll a, see him that's in, skipper right there. Yep, you'll see him in the helmet, and you'll think, holy crap, that man just won twenty games without even like twenty games by mid April without even stepping on campus. Yeah, so I've I watch I go to MCC games because which by the way, twenty games in mid April is probably where Baylor baseball was this year. By the way, I probably should have gone with a higher number. Yeah, continued though, yeah. you should have. Um, and I love the way his teams play. You talk defensive coordinator; they are so fundamentally sound. And like, not even when errors happen, but when a guy is just out of position, or you know, the outfielder's not calling off the infielder. Yeah. He's, just ribbon these guys like shootings for show offs, Larry. Yes. Thank you. Young Larry. Um, and they're so fundamentally sound. They, they work teams into mistakes at yeah. the plate and on specifically on the base paths. And I know that's not something you think about a lot in baseball, but he manufactures runs without playing small ball because he, they just push the envelope all the time. But those guys go power five and start power five the next year because they are so fundamentally sound on top of being really good. The only way you can describe it, Drake, and I'm going to sound like an old Cape League guy here, they just know how to play winning baseball mm. so well. And 
I just love watching them play, and I would love to see Baylor like that because uh, not to say that Baylor hasn't been fundamentally sound under Rod, but this year it just did not feel like they were playing winning baseball. And lo and behold, they weren't. But we talked about it. The thing was is they're just not that talented out of the bullpen specifically, but the arms, the pitching was just not there. And Mm -hmm. they were never comfortable in a game uh, because they weren't all that sound on the bump. So would love to see what Mitch could do with a D1 Power 5 program. Well, there's a top five on both sides to run back through them quickly. My top five, number five, Stephen Trout, head coach at Texas State. Number four, Dan Hefner, head coach at Dallas Baptist University. Number three, give me the assistant coach at Texas and pitching coach, Sean Allen. Number two, give me the pitching coach at Tennessee, Frank Anderson. And number one, the McLennan Community College head coach, former Baylor assistant and the best team in Baylor history, Mitch Thompson. Cam, your top five. Yeah, so in the air, in the order that I set it in, uh, Dan Hefner, uh, I say Stephen Trout after that. Yeah, Chris yeah. Berry, Troy Tulowitzki, aka Kim Mulkey, and Mitchie Colorado, as I referred to him today, Mitch Thompson. Locked and loaded, locked on, if you will. Folks, thanks for listening to the show today. Drake Toll alongside Cam Stewart. Come back on Friday. We are now transitioning in the off-season to three shows, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every single week, bringing you all things Baylor throughout the summer months. So our next two months, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all on Locked on Baylor. Friday, we are talking the best player in the Big 12, replacing for Baylor head, head baseball coach, best player on Baylor football team as well. All things football, baseball, etc. cetera, and a roundtable that will debuts on Friday. Again, Drake Toll alongside Cameron Stewart. This has been, always will be, forever and ever and ever Locked on Baylor. <laughs>